that in relative terms, silver will go up compared to gold. I, in some respect, how can people on a financial level be part of the winning team? We might not want to, you know, in, in, in some respect, like move to these BRICS countries or anything like that, but we can, in some sense, copy in our financial lives what others are doing. So h- how do we be part of the winning team in this case? Well, uh, strange enough, and this is, again, a choice between alternatives. The alternatives are paper assets or real assets, and I would highly encourage everyone to invest in real assets, and I believe the BRICS are going to do exactly that. Uh, I've said many times that gold is an insurance policy against financial chaos. It It is money, and, and there's two or three people who talk about in the comments, no, 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 gold isn't an insurance policy, gold is money. Well, yeah, gold is money, but it can, it can function as an insurance policy. And I certainly, if there was ever a time in history where you needed an insurance policy against chaos, it would be right now. We have a few viewers' questions on precious metals. Blake is wanting to know, do you have any recommendations around choosing a depository to store your gold in? And I guess this is um, kind of assuming that you want to store your metals in a depository and not your own possession, but your perspective on all that. Uh, strange enough, you just raised a really good issue. Do I think the idea of a depository is good? Absolutely. Uh, I have a depository that I deal with, and some of my gold and silver are on deposit with the depository. Uh, alternatively, at the same time, I, I have physical gold and silver because I want to have some physical gold and silver as an insurance policy. I've got enough that that would cover me for at least six months. So I think both are good. It's not an either or situation. But one of the things that I never ever do is recommend things where I, I would be using my reputation to talk about something that I don't necessarily know. Uh, if you're going to pick a depository, pick an honest one. Yeah, I think uh, there are some certain things that we look at. Which we only partner with depositories that are segregated, audited, and allocated. So no like pool accounts and stuff like that, which I think when it comes to investing in precious metals, you want to reduce as much you know, counterparty risk as possible. And having pooled accounts or anything like that um, just adds more risk, it seems like, into your investment. Yeah, you have to remove counterparty risk. The beauty about gold and silver is there is zero counterparty risk of anything that's in your position and a relatively small amount of counterparty risk by putting on depository with someone else. But uh, frankly, banks started in the first place as being depositories for precious metals. Okay, the whole fractional reserve system was based around people depositing gold and had been issued paper certificates for it. But uh, certainly, I, I would suggest to your listeners uh, understand counterparty risk and, and do not go with whoever's the flashiest. Go with somebody with good reputation. And frankly, with the Internet now, uh, you ought to be able to figure out who the good guys are, who the bad guys are. Definitely. We have a viewer question again here about silver. How does silver price react to a prolonged recession? And obviously, it sounds like uh, you're looking for more than a recession here, but your perspective on the economic woes that we're going to see and how silver may react. That's a really good question. And luckily, I'm a student of history. I mean, Barbara died, and unfortunately, I got nothing better to do than wander around the web. Uh, It's a good question because it's potentially very dangerous. Nobody knows this, but the the Dow crashed starting in October 1929, and by 1932, silver actually went down to 29 cents an ounce. They were giving silver away because there was no demand for silver whatsoever. It was so far under the cost of production that the United States government literally came out with a silver tax stamp 
that if you were going to sell silver in the United States from a mine, you had to have one of these tax stamps and the government would buy silver from you for $1.29. So in the depression of 1929 to 1937, the value of silver dropped. Uh, I, I believe, and it's just my opinion, that in relative terms, silver will go up compared to gold. I, I think silver and platinum are the cheapest metals right now. They're what I'm putting my money into. Um, I, I I like silver, but it also attracts more flimflam artists than any other metal. There's a lot of silver bugs who, who are literally nuttier than a fruitcake. Okay, they're convinced silver is going to go to 500 bucks an ounce all by itself. And and the, the number one silver guru uh, was running around in in. Uh, the year 2000, saying that by December of 2000, there would be no more above ground silver available. And I wrote to him, and I said, what do you mean? <laughs> okay, that's crazy. We're not going to run out of silver. There's pl- tons of silver around. And, of course, he turned out to be dead wrong, and I turned out to be dead right. Uh, there have been 50 billion ounces of silver produced in world history. There is a lot of silver still around, but at 90 to 1, it, it's relatively cheap uh, compared to gold. What do you see as a realistic per- performance for silver then? It sounds like you're bullish, but you're not uber bullish on it. Um, so what, what is mo- a more realistic outlook? No, I, I am uber bullish, but as far as picking points, I can't pick a point. If, if silver got down to 30 to 1 to gold, I would be selling silver and anything above 80 to 1 for silver, I'm a buyer of silver. Uh, silver is cheap. I don't ever pick price. Lots of people do, but there's lots of people smarter than me. Uh, I don't know how to pick price. I, I just think in relative terms, silver will go up compared to gold. Bill is wanting to know, what are the chances that the government would put unrealized gains tax on gold to discourage stacking? Uh, very, very possible. Uh, it, it's important to understand that our government is in the hands of people who, who are nuttier than Fruit Loops. Okay, the, these people are goofy. They screw up everything they do. They're totally, absolutely clueless. The United States, if you go back to 1775, we have never been run by a bigger band of fools than we are today. And the one thing that you can guarantee is they're going to do a lot of stupid things. What they haven't taken into account of is there are 330 million Americans and there's 399 million guns. So they need to be very careful because they don't have the power that they believe they have 